So something that's critical to know how to do when you're taking a moment in 3D is to know how to take the determinant of a matrix in both 2D and 3D. So the determinant of a matrix is just a scalar number um, that results from a matrix. So in 2D, it's relatively easy. So if we had a matrix that was A, B, C, D, if we took the determinant of that matrix, the determinant is just defined as A times D minus B times C, just like that. So in 3D, finding the determinant of a matrix is a little harder, uh, but it's not uh, too complex. So we have a 3D matrix uh, defined like this. So we have A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I in our three rows and three columns. If we wanted to take the determinant of this matrix, uh, there's a little pattern we have to memorize. So what we do is we multiply A times the determinant of this matrix. And then we subtract it by B times the, the determinant of that matrix if we combine those together. And then finally, we add it to C times the, the, the determinant of that matrix, D, E, G, I. So it's a little hard to remember, but if we write it out, it looks like this. So we have A times the, the determinant of E, F, H, I minus B times the determinant of D, F, G, I plus C times the determinant of D, E, G, H. So at this point, we can just take the determinant of these 2D matrices uh, the same way we just learned. So we have A times E, I minus F, H minus B times D, I minus G, F plus C times D, H minus G, E. And we would just go ahead and evaluate those and we would get our determinant of this 3D matrix. So the way that we apply this concept of taking um, a determinant of a 3D matrix is when we are taking the um, moment about a point in 3D space, it becomes very, very helpful. Uh, so we have here uh, an XYZ plane where we have a point O, which we consider to be the origin, and a point A, uh, which we consider to be just an arbitrary point in space. Uh, there's a force acting at A, um, which we can you know, display as just a, a magnitude and a direction, or we can display as the components uh, Fx, Fy, and Fz in dotted lines. We can also um, represent the position vector from zero, or from O to A, um, as again, either a magnitude and direction or the components Rx, Ry, and Rz. Um, and once we break them into components, we can express them as uh, vectors like this, where we have F equals Fxi plus Fyj plus Fzk, Roa equals Rxi, Ryj plus Rzk. So once we do that, say we wanted to find that the, the moment that F causes about O. So we have an, a force F applied at A, um, a point O, and we want to find the moment that F causes about O. So the way that we do this is we create a three by three matrix in this, this very specific manner. So we put I, J, and K in the top row. We put the X, Y, Z components of the position vector from O to A in the second row. So again, this is from the point that we want to take the moment about to the point that the force is applied. And we'll see how we deal with the signs with that in the next example. And then we have uh, three components of the force in the bottom row, Fx, Fy, and Fz. And again, that's the force that is causing the moment. So again, remember, you know, when we take the determinant of a three by three matrix, uh, we split it up into three smaller two by two determinants and then take those. So we like we learned in the last section, uh, we have I times R, Y, R, Z, F, Y, F, Z, minus J, R, X, R, Z, F, X, F, Z, plus K, R, X, R, Y, F, X, F, Y. And we take the determinant of those three smaller uh, matrices by, you know, R, Y times F, Z, minus F, Y times R, Z. And we do that for the three directions and we get this long equation. And a lot of times some of the, you know, if the position 
Um, if a component of the position vector or a component of the force vector is zero, then a lot of these sometimes will cancel out. You know, a direction will cancel out completely or one of these will cancel out, but it's really dependent on the problem. And again, for simple problems, in 3D space, uh, this might not be necessary for you. You might just be able to see that, you know, if you have a force that has two components and it's in a sp specific direction, you can just easily see what the moments will be. But the reason why this is a good method is because this always works in 3D space. You can even do this in 2D space. Um, this will always work. And if you have a really, really complex problem where you have, you know, a force that has three components and a position vector that has three components, some of the calculations that you would do, um, you know, using other methods could get complicated and be prone to errors. And this is a really, really uh, organized way of doing it. Also, it's very easy to check with a calculator or MATLAB. So this is a good example problem that we can use to try out this method of taking the moment about a point using a matrix. Uh, so we have a 12 foot long bar along the x-axis with a cable connected to the end, connected to a point up here um, that is 4.8 feet in the uh, plus y direction and eight feet in the negative z direction. Uh, we know the tension in the cable. The tension in the cable is 380 pounds. Um, and we want to find the moment that this force causes, that's applied at B, we want to find that the moment this force causes about A. So the first step in this problem is we have to break this force up into components. And this is something that um, you would have to do no matter what uh, method that you're using to take the moment. Uh, so it's important that you know how to do this specifically. So what we want to do to find the components of this force is we want to first find the position vector from B to C. We'll label this as R, B, C. And we can see that if we're going from B to C, we have to go minus 12 feet in the X direction. So minus 12 I. We have to go 4.8 feet up in the, Z, in the Y direction. So plus 4.8 J. And then we have to go minus eight feet in the Z direction. So minus eight K. So after we found the um, position vector, we have to find the magnitude of the position vector by just taking the square root of the sum of the squares of each component, and we get 15.2 feet. Now we can find the unit direction vector, as we will label lambda BC, by dividing each component by the um, magnitude. So we'll write negative 12, 15.2i, plus 4.8. 15.2 J minus 8, 15.2 K. And that evaluates to that. So as a check, if we wanted to, we can go back and we can find the magnitude of this vector. And because it's a unit vector, it should equal one. Um, so now we can find the uh, components of F by multiplying the magnitude of F times the unit vector that gives the direction of f. So we know the magnitude of f we were given to be 380 pounds. So we multiply it by negative 0.789i plus 0.316j minus 0.526k. So once we evaluate that, we get this as our um, force vector. So we have, um, have negative 300 pounds in the x direction plus 120 pounds in the y direction, and minus 200 pounds in the k direction. And if we just take a minute and look at this force again, we can kind of see that that makes sense. It's This force is pointing in the negative x direction, the positive y direction, and the negative z direction. So it makes sense that uh, we have those uh, signs. So the next thing we want to do to find the moment, so this is, this is one thing we'll need. So let's star that just to have it. Um, the next thing we want to do when we find the moment is we want to find the position vector from A to B. So we want to take the moment about A and the force that we want to take the moment with is at B. So because of that, we want to take the position vector from A to B. So if we start at A, we see that we are plus 12 feet in the X direction, but we don't have to move in the y direction to get to b, and we don't have to move in the z direction to get to b. So the only 
component of this um, position vector from A to B will be in the x direction. So we can write this position vector, we can call it R A B. It's going to be 12i plus 0j plus 0k. And we'll star that as well because that will, that's what we'll need. So when we take the force, or when we take the moment uh, using uh, the matrix method, uh, again, we write the moment is equal to the position vector from A to B cross product of the force vector. And in matrix form, like we talked about previously, that just means I, J, K, and then the three components of the position vector, so 12, 0, 0, and then the three components of the force vector, negative 300, 120, and negative 200. And remember, we're taking the determinant of this matrix. So remember again, when we take the determinant of a 3D matrix, uh, what we're really doing is first breaking it up into three smaller determinants and then evaluating those. So our first determinant is gonna be I times the determinant of 0, 0, 120, negative 200. So 0, 0, 120, negative 200. And again, uh, we're taking the, the determinant of this matrix, but I'm not gonna write it just to save space. And then we have minus j times 12, 0, negative 300, negative 200. 12, 0, negative 300, negative 200. And then finally, plus k times the determinant of 12, 0, negative 300, 120. So when we take the determinant of each of these 2D uh, matrices, uh, we already know how to do that. So it's going to be I times zero times 120, zero, or zero times 200, zero times 120. Both of those evaluate to zero, so this is gonna completely go away. Then we have minus J times 12 times negative 200. So we'll have 12 times negative 200 minus negative 300 times zero, which is zero, plus k times 12 times 120, minus 300 times zero, which is just zero. So if we simplify this, uh, we see that we get negative j times negative uh, 2400 foot pounds. And I, I haven't been writing the units here, which is um, bad practice, but because we're working with feet as our position unit and uh, pounds our force unit, we can see that when we multiply uh, position and a force or a distance and a force, we get foot pounds. And then plus K 12 times 120, which is going to be 1440 foot pounds. And we can rearrange this to make it a little nicer. So again, our moment about A is going to be, because we have two negatives here that cancels, so we have 2,400 foot pounds in the J direction plus 1,440 foot pounds in the K direction. So that's our moment. So after we've got our answer, it's usually a good idea to go back, draw the moment on the x, y, z axes, and compare it to the original diagram to see if it makes sense physically. So we got for our moment about a 2,400 foot-pounds in the j direction and positive 1,440 foot-pounds in the k direction. So when we draw this, we remember the right-hand rule. So the right-hand rule says that if you take your right hand and line your thumb up pointing in the direction of the positive direction of the axis. If you curl your fingers, that is the direction of the positive moment. So if we take for the Z direction, for example, if we point our thumb in the direction of the Z direction and curl our fingers, we see that 
going into the board is the direction of the positive moment. And a negative moment would be coming this way. Same thing for the Y in the X direction, except with the Y direction, we'd put our hand like this with our thumb going up like that, and that would be a positive moment. And for the X direction, that would be a positive moment. So when we sketch this, we see we have a positive moment about the J direction, which corresponds to the Y axis. So we draw a positive arrow or a positive circle, a positive circular arrow in the J direction, which is gonna go like that. So we can draw 2,400 foot pounds in the J direction. Same thing for the K direction, which corresponds to the Z axis. Uh, we wanna draw a positive moment. So again, we take our hand and we point our thumb and we see that a positive moment turns that way. So we'll draw 1440 foot pounds K. So that's what the components of our moment look like. And again, this is point A. But let's go back to this original drawing. If we can picture this force pulling the bar up, we can imagine that it, it makes sense that there's a moment going in this direction about the z-axis because this force is wanting the bar to turn that way. It's causing the bar to move in that direction about the z-axis, and that's what we have. Same thing about the y-axis. If we look at the y-axis and we see that um, the force is going this way, causing the bar to want to spin this way about the y-axis, we got that as well. And we also notice that there's no moment in the x direction or about the x axis. And that makes sense because be between where the force is applied and the x axis, the force is applied on the x axis and there's no distance between the force and the x axis and there can't be a moment about the x axis. So once we got our answer, we went back and we drew it and we just tried to make sense, um, see if it made sense physically in terms of the uh, diagram and it does and uh, that is the correct thing to do once you finish these types of problems. So I hope this helped, and um, if you have any questions, feel free to uh, ask me. So I just wanted to put this at the end of the video here because um, MATLAB is a very, very good, good tool to check um, things that we do with matrices. Um, in this case, when we took the, the determinant of the three by three matrix, um, it wasn't that hard to do, uh, but it's a good idea to know how to use MATLAB to check stuff like that when you do it, and if you're dealing with um, you know, uh, weirder numbers in the future, um, just to make sure you didn't make any calculation errors. So um, when we want to do something like this, in this case, we just want to check the determinant of a three by three matrix. The first thing we want to do is uh, define our symbolic variables, which are i, j, and k. And that's just going to tell MATLAB that whenever we put in i, j, or k, we're just using it as a variable and it doesn't actually uh, stand for any value that we would assign it. It's just a, uh, it's just a letter. So then we define our, our matrix that we're gonna take the determinant of. Um, we'll call it M and we, used, we use our uh, square brackets to define a matrix. And in the top row, we write I, J, K. And when we separate the elements in the row, we just put a space. And then we put a semicolon to define the end of the row. And then we can define the next row as the position vector, which remember was 12, 0, 0. We put another semicolon to define the end of the row. And then we put in the force vector, which was negative 300, 120, negative 200. And we put our closed, bra uh, closed brackets and we put a semicolon just to suppress the output. Finally, we wanna find the determinant of this and all we have to do is type debt and then the matrix name and that's it. And then we can run this and we get our answer as 2400J plus 1440K, and that is what we got in the last uh, problem. So this is just a good way to check that you made sure you did all your calculations correctly, um, and it uh, could be helpful when you get to more, uh, more complex problems.